Well, lad, well, today I'm lucky enough to be joined by one of the most exciting players in the game. The 23-year-old burst through the rugby ranks in basically a 12-month period after starring for Counties Manukau in the NPC to then taking his opportunity at the Hurricanes and becoming the Form 9 in Super Rugby. This obviously led to his selection in the All Blacks and it didn't stop there as his running game and his ability to break open a game saw him carving it up on the biggest stage at the recent Rugby World Cup. Well, this season, unfortunately, a nasty knee injury has halted his journey, but I am telling you right now that that will not stop this man from becoming one of the all-time greats. It is, of course, the great Cam Roygaard. Welcome, mate. Thanks, mate. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm a big fan of the podcast. Mate, when you said that, when I messaged you and you said you listen, I was um, I was stoked because it obviously makes things a little bit easier to convince you to get on and yeah. um, I was just cool knowing that you're, you've been tuning into some of the episodes. Yeah, I love it. Like, it's, um, nah, it's been really good. Like, obviously, some of the older boys um, that I hadn't met yet, you know, like, I enjoyed like Cody Taylor's one. I remember listening yeah. to that um, at the start of the year. You know, when sort of well before made the All Blacks and that sort of stuff, but it was just sort of cool, like his World Cup experience, and then sort of as mine sort of unfolded, sort of comparing the two and sort of seeing how it goes. Um, yeah, that's no, good stuff. Yeah, mate, I'm looking forward to going through your journey. It's been a rapid rise, and uh, we will start with that injury though, because um, obviously a hot topic at the moment. Lots of questions came in about it. Like, how how is it? How's the rehab going? Yeah, really well. Um, I think we're just over nine weeks now, um, tracking really well. Um, so obviously ruptured my patella tendon for people that don't know yeah. um, so I had to have an operation to reattach it it's sort of um, the way it tore was a bit funny it's sort of on a diagonal so it wasn't from either the top or the bottom sort of mm-hmm. through the middle so um, but I guess of a freak accident I guess I'd call it but um, like the surgery went well um, they put a wire in there to sort of uh, protect it while it's healing so that comes out um, in a couple of weeks uh, day before the final, so oh, yeah. um, depending how we go, uh, might be straight out of the um, <laughs> hospital to the to Sky Stadium, all going well, but um, yeah, no, nah, so once that's out, we'll be able to sort of get a bit more um, range and sort of we'll be away in terms of the strength and all that sort of stuff, so yeah. How sore was it? How sore was it at the time? Painful one? It was a funny one, like um, I thought it was just like a knee-on-knee collision, Oh yeah, um, that's sort of what it felt like, just like a big thud. Um, but then obviously looked down my kneecap was sort of came up because there was nothing sort of keeping it down so I yeah. thought I just like had my kneecap yeah. um, and then they sort of told me on the field the doctor um, and the physio was sort of saying like nah I think your patella tendon's um, ruptured um, and then it wasn't until I watched back um, that I realised that no one actually touched me but in terms of nothing hit it mm. it was just it just went under the stress and how I fell so um, yeah bit, bit niggly sort of the way it happened sort of shimming around the ref it was off like a turnover or something off a line out didn't see him coming and it's just always those ones where you're not prepared for a collision where you're sort of full funny yeah <laughs> i was gonna say how filthy at the ref were you who was, was it paul yeah. williams uh i actually can't remember oh, um, that's oh yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> holding yeah. a grudge oh, the worst bit nah the worst bit was when i was on the ground and like i just knew something was wrong so i don't want to move and he's sort of standing over me i was like yeah just give me some space <laughs> like just chill out like, <laughs> just you know you just want to sort of have some room to sort of breathe and sort of sort yourself out but yeah um yeah so and then obviously sort of the pain sort of came in i just didn't want to move it because it obviously looked didn't look that great so yeah yeah Oh, mate, yeah. brutal, yeah, brutal timing, and especially with the form you're in as well. But I was thinking about that even before was um, around how TJ's ruptured Achilles gave you an opportunity to sort of um, skyrocket into the All Blacks, and then and now you've sort of your injury's given TJ an opportunity to um, probably force his way back into the All Blacks on the form he's in. Yeah, it's um, quite funny how it sort of works out. Eh? Um, we're actually really looking forward. We've got a good relationship, yeah. um, us two, like, um, and we really enjoy playing together, and we're looking forward to sort of having that you know, punch-punch sort of combo, yeah. um, however that you know was going to eventuate. Um, so it's quite, I guess, unfortunate in that respect um, that we're both not able to play um, at the same time or, like, you know, in the same squad. But, um, yeah, it's been awesome for Tej to see him sort of, you know, step up, and, you know, he's got obviously heaps of experience and um, is up for it, and he probably just needed probably a few opportunities to sort of prove that to himself as well, yeah. like, and his forms, you know, back to um, back to his best, you know, scoring tries like he does. So um, that's no, been good to watch. Mate, some try scoring record he's got, eh? it's incredible. <laughs> I mean, your yeah. strike rate's probably just as good. Um, once you get to as many games as he's played, you're probably a title or record that you're looking to get. Yeah, I don't know, but. <laughs> 
I think I scored nine last year, yeah, um, but then I saw some stat that he's done that like five or six times. So, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'd have to back it up a few times. I only scored three this year, so yeah. um, have to have some, you know, might have to get some double digit, digits for a few seasons to catch him. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, one thing he obviously is or playing with him, one of the most competitive players that I've ever played with, and by all accounts, you're right up there as well. You you two going at it must be some pretty intense battles at, at everything. Yeah, yeah, especially in the gym. Like I remember my first, uh, or my second year, sorry, um, when he came back from Japan, like obviously I was like third string then, so wasn't really playing much, but like we're just going toe-to-toe in the gym. Like any opportunity you could, for example, like yeah. be on the squat rack together, it'd be like, you know, 100, 140, <laughs> 160, 180, and then it's like maxing out on just like a Monday, like, you know, it was pretty funny. Like just sort of, I suppose we both got that competitive edge and he's not going to let some young fella sort of, you know, um, outlift him, for example. So, yeah. um, but he's clear of me now since he's obviously snapped his Achilles. His bloody bench press has gone up to like 170. So <laughs> <laughs> nowhere near that. So that might be me now for the next, um, you know, four or five months in the gym, just yeah, you'll straight get up him back. Catch him, yeah. <laughs> he won't catch you on the the Bronco though. Uh, you've nah, got that one, surely. Yeah, hopefully that's something I sort of want to hold on to. But yeah. I know I'm pretty. Like, I'm, um, I back myself on it. Um, I don't like. Um, I don't think I've actually lost one. So yeah, hopefully try to keep that going. Um, but yeah, who knows now? Uh, once we get back, we'll see how we get on. Yeah. Yeah. So what are you running at the moment, or what sort of level can you do anything? Nah, so I'm able to start my strength stuff in the gym. Oh, yeah. um, they call it phase one, so that's before wire. The wire comes out, but um, yeah, once the wire's out, that's when I can sort of start ripping into some more stuff. So um, doing running, me- 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 sorry, running mechanics and all that sort of stuff. But um, that wire's a little bit restricting at the moment in terms of like range um, and knee flexion. So um, once that's out, then I should be able to get to full range pretty quick, they think, and then continue with the quad strength, and they'll be able to run you. Yeah, so. Oh, that's cool. Eh? They, they, they say your first sort of major injury is one that tests a lot of players. You would have heard it before, but um, how hard that sort of first one is to sort of go through um, the yeah. big rehab process. What have you sort of learnt um, through your process so far? Yeah, so oh, it's quite interesting. So I had a um, shoulder operation in the end of well, 2021, right when COVID happened. So it was oh, first game you? at NPC after my first year. So oh, yeah. um, that one was a little bit different though because we were in lockdown and all that sort of stuff and there was yeah. no real time pressure or like, you know, there wasn't really like form to be worrying about or like yeah, all that sort yeah, of stuff. Yeah. So um, yeah, this one's been quite, I guess, different because of the timing and trying to get back for, you know, end of year tour and all that sort of stuff. But yeah. um, I've learned heaps around just like my body, um, like the different um, things like around like nutrition, like the importance of that um, and recovery obviously is huge so I can back up uh, my rehab days and um, yeah, no, nah, it's been really good. Like um, the medical team's been awesome. Um, coming up with a plan, see how much they care. Um, mm-hmm. It's been pretty cool. Like um, our head physio um, and our bio week went to Australia, went to the Roosters camp to um, talk to the medical team because they had a um, player that had the same injury. Oh, true. So let's get a better understanding of it. So that was awesome. And like teed up a chat with me and him. So, you know, helped me understand what he struggled with and what yeah. worked well and all that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, there's been some gold like, um, in terms of that stuff. But, um, yeah, just I suppose like the mindset stuff's been quite good. Um, sort of how to keep positive and sort of when those, I suppose, negative thoughts do come, how to brush them to the side because they obviously are, like, you know, generally there. But just an awareness around that sort of stuff has been um, – a bit of gold for me and um, just finding ways to I suppose keep positive and um, yeah not I guess get, worry about the future too much and just you know stay on track yeah you mentioned um, watching uh, you didn't have to watch any form last time what do you like watching obviously there's um, plenty of rugby going at the moment some nines yeah. playing well what do you like watching it's actually quite good like, it's probably keeping me sane like obviously the Canes playing well so I yeah. um, love that but yeah I obviously enjoy watching other nines and um, see how they play um you know, TJ's quite good what he brings to the table um, in terms of physicality. Um, that's a strength of his. And then um, I really enjoy um, Noah's, you know, running game, for example, um, when he snipes, um, it's pretty lethal in that space. And then, you know, you've got Cortez, who um, is probably a similar build to me, physical as well, um, gets some nice touches, second touches, I should say. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's, yeah, I 
probably quite lucky. I, I enjoy watching code. I know some people don't, but um, yeah, so that's, especially those first couple of weeks when I was parked on the couch, it was um, really good just to um, watch that and over the weekend and some league got into that now. So um, yeah, that's no, been good. Mate, yeah, good parked up. Do you watch much of the Northern stuff? Do you see much of DuPont and Gibson Park? or uh, A little bit, yeah. 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 Um, mainly just sort of what they sort of, um, how they play, like I suppose the difference in playing styles and stuff. Um, yeah, I probably didn't quite realise, especially like a few years ago, like the difference in international, well, like across the world, you know, like how yeah. different it is, you know, how sort of Australia and New Zealand have that similar style of play. Um, and then, you know, the South Africans and Northern Hemisphere teams play a little, um, little bit different in terms of their game management and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah. um, but then I guess, you know, how uh, the influence a nine can have on a game in the Northern Hemisphere is pretty, pretty huge, like as we've seen through DuPont and um, Jamison Gibson Park, who's, you know, pretty hustling as well. So Yeah, mate, they're, they've been on an absolute fire. But sounds like you're um, going to be right back there when, when you're over this little um, hurdle and I'm um, looking forward to seeing you back out there. But as you would know from being a regular listener, you like to know where the where this goes. So I do like to go back to the start for you, um, where it all started. I understand you grew up in Cambridge or in the Waikato region anyway. Yep. Yeah, so I uh, grew up in a place, Kirapira, um, oh, which yeah. was yeah, just outside of Cambridge. So I uh, went to primary school there, um, playing rugby from when I was like four. Um, just love footy. Uh, my older brother played it. He's a couple years older than me. So I um, would find myself playing in my grade or whatever and then, you know, hoping that someone wasn't playing in their team or they, they were <laughs> short so I could play in both. Yeah. Um, you know, that was the barefoot days at 8 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, so now it was pretty awesome. Um, just, yeah, just loved it. And then um, from there, went to St. Peter's um, School in Cambridge, um, just a day student, played all my um, school rugby, the rest of it there, um, smallest, smallest in the team, um, always trying to punch by my weight. I think I played under 15s when I was like 14 or 13 or something. Um, still the smallest, just like, it was just, it was an awesome challenge. Like, I reckon, like, looking back, like, learn heaps, like, in terms of, like, adversity and just trying to, like, um, I suppose, oh, I don't know, just, um, you know, in that higher level, sort of pushing yourself to try, you know, keep up with the big fellas. Um, so mm. it was pretty cool. And then, yeah, play first 15. Um, and then got an opportunity to go to the counties, um, their academy out of school. And then, um, yeah, NPC, and then got opportunity at the Canes through when um, Boothy snapped his leg. That's right. Yeah, so then ended up staying there and then got a contract from there. And Yeah. Look at you now. But you you had a big um, speedway upbringing too, by all accounts. Like, was your old man a racer? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, your old man uh, raced since he was probably my age now um yeah so we just sort of grew into it that was probably um it was definitely rugby in the winter and then speedway in the summer oh. um same my brother and i we raced uh, mini stocks which is the um the kid version of a stock car which was little dats and 1200 engines yeah. um so it was pretty fun um and then yeah sort of went up to the up the classes raced saloons for a little bit uh, managed to get second at the um, New zealand champs in 2019 true how um, old were you there uh I was 18 so oh yeah Oh, so you did it all the way through? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I did it up until um, I got my first Canes contract. So, oh, fair. Yeah, right. yeah. So I did it. Um, and that summer before I got my, before I played NPC um, in 2020, and then um, got my, yeah, Canes contract. So then had to sort of, um, did it up until Christmas. And then after that, I was like, all right, better focus on the rugby now. So, and then obviously yeah. haven't looked back. So, yeah. Was that ever something, would you have rather have gone down the speedway track or was rugby always something you enjoyed more? Nah, um, I think rugby was probably, just because I could see like a like genuine pathway there, um, like speedway is awesome, like the speedway community is pretty cool, pretty unique. Um, yeah. And like my brother still races now, races um, oh, yeah. super stocks. Um, so um, like it's, yeah, it's pretty cool to stay connected to that, um, you know, watch when I can and help support him sort of. Uh, swap roles from him supporting me so um, yeah that's no, still pretty cool what is the sort of pathway you can get to speed what's like if you're the second best in the country at 18 like um what's the sort of ultimate goal for the speedway guys uh probably just to i guess get some sponsorship so you can oh, yeah. um, so you don't have to fund it yourself yeah. that's probably the, <laughs> no. um, yeah i think like, being an all black people, at a rugby world cup might have well that's yeah <laughs> you might have chosen yeah, the right yeah. path like there's people that um that build race car chassis and oh, yeah. you know, if they're lucky enough that's their job um you know like, but they um, like my brother's an engineer so he just sort of um you know loves that stuff and yeah. he's built a couple of cars himself and all that sort of stuff but um 
yeah, it's pretty hard to, I guess, get a career out of it. There's yeah. only probably a select a handful of people that would sort of um, either not pay for it themselves or yeah. you know, get some get some corn if they can. But yeah, how would you go now if you jumped in it? It would have been a what? How long's it been since you've got in there racing? Um, oh, well, it's been probably close to four years now. Um, I reckon I'd be right back yourself. Um, yeah. Yeah, like yeah, I had a drive bike. in my brother's car um, last year, just on my own, yeah. just um, on the D-Lo, <laughs> <laughs> so I get in trouble, but uh, so it was pretty fun, but um, yeah, it's, it's hard to beat, like, it's hard to explain, it's a pretty unique um, sport, Yeah, um, it's quite cool though, because it's, um, I guess, you know, being in a team sport all the time, um, this one's a little bit different, because it's just you out there, you know, so yeah. it's, um, it's all on you, and how aggressive you are, you know, it's, I don't know, there's a lot of, like, instinct stuff, so yeah. it's, yeah, that's pretty fun. Right, sounds awesome. And you mentioned your rugby when you were younger. Like, did you? When did you sort of decide that rugby was another path you might want to take? Um, yeah, well, I made um, roller mills, which is like an under twelve or thirteen um, regional rep team. So I've made the Waikato thing when I was um, when I was in year seven, so a year early. Uh, I'm still so small, but my skills were pretty good. Like oh, I got yeah. told at a young age, like if you want to be. Um, you know, a good rugby player, you've got to learn the pass both ways. So that was from like seven or something. So, you know, as you do, <laughs> um, no more ch- no more chainsaws. Um, but, oh no, I think I always just wanted to be, like, just froth rugby. Like, I just loved it, eh? And yeah. just wanted to, I guess, I guess, be as good as I can. Um, and then as a, like, first 15, um, was pretty young when I made that as well. Um, played, you know, 50 odd games or whatever. Um, but I just, yeah, I don't, there was never a point where it was like, yeah, I want to be a rugby player. It was almost like a, I'm going to, always give it a crack like mm. yeah but it was quite interesting how the um, opportunity came up at counties because um, i got no family up there or anything like that but um waikato didn't really show too much interest and i was sort of they were gonna give me a like academy opportunity but um sort of oh, i heard from my coach that some a particular person who has quite a big influence in like um development of you know like young players um told me that i'd peaked oh <laughs> or, true and thought basically was saying that we don't think it's going to get any better uh, but we'll take him kind of thing like as an afterthought so then like, when i heard that i was like ah, really like you know <laughs> 17 years old not gonna get any better like, dude, that's pretty tough but, so that was sort of the main reason behind you know going to counties um Learned a lot, you know, f- first time at home, you know, yeah. working, training, all that sort of stuff. So it was probably really good. Like looking back, it was probably the best thing I ever did um, in terms of, you know, a bit of discipline, values, motivation, um, you know, all that sort of stuff. So, mm. um, yeah, and that, that's probably a big reason why I'm still there now because, you know, they gave me my first crack and, yeah. Were you always like fast and fit? Uh, I'd say fit, yep, but nah, I wasn't really fast. Oh, I was, yeah. um, Oh, people always take the piss out of me because I sort of look like I had a bowed leg, like <laughs> just like ran super all, like randomly, like unnatural as. Yeah. Um, but no, nah, I was never really that fast. Um, wasn't really till probably got in the gym. I was gymming quite a bit when I was in school, but like um, not till sort of got into that academy space. Um, started actually feeling some good turnaround, and I reckon the correlation between that, um, you know, power and all that sort of stuff helped on the field, and then just tied up the running mechanics and yeah, um, yeah. So. And were you when were you fit naturally, or was this a conscious effort to get fit, knowing that how important it was? Probably a bit of both. Um, yeah, I probably was. I guess naturally pretty fit. Like yeah. I was definitely always with like you know the small skinnier side rather than um, someone that was just like naturally strong in the gym. So um, yeah, but then we always like worked pretty hard. Like I, um, when I was in the you know first fifteen, there was a big push in our rugby space um, when I was there. So. Um, it turned into almost like a second, you know, outside of school, you're training, you know, three times a week uh, in the gym, you know, almost every day after mm. um, after school and stuff. So um, I guess the fitness sort of came up from that. But um, And then once I knew that I was pretty fit, having that chip on my shoulder to not lose that or, you know, to always compete and win. So, yeah, yeah that's definitely helped. You're, you're a good example of someone who hasn't come through the national age grades like so many of the guys these days that's – once you're in that national system, you're basically on your path, but um, you didn't take that route, but you've still um, managed to get there extremely quickly. Um, what was it like not yeah. making New Zealand schools or any or any of that stuff? Yeah, it was. Um, oh, it was pretty like it was pretty tough. Like it wasn't even like that stuff. I didn't even make like Waikato, you know, under 14s, 15s, 16s. Yeah, like and that like because that was all I like sort of wanted to do. Like I was like 
far out. This is pretty brutal. Like, and a lot of it was just around the size stuff. So like, had skills. I was playing a little bit of nine and ten, which probably in the long run didn't really help. But um, or at the time, sorry. But um, yeah, it was a little bit like um, I suppose demolarizing. I guess like it was yeah. just yeah because I played that roller mills or whatever. Um, which was all good, and then after that, just you have nothing, and then uh, didn't make the Chiefs under 18s in my last year, which I thought I was um, definitely in contention for, and then um, it was probably that was probably you know between that, it was probably a big part of um, why I did go to counties because I, I sort of felt like they already had this opinion of me. How small are you? I feel like you're a big nine, like one yeah. of the biggest. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess I, I started to grow a little bit when I um, got into like the first thing and stuff. But when I was in the first thing, like the first my first year, I was like 65 kilos but then when i oh, finished yeah. i was like 80 ish oh, so like i grew a lot that's why i saw in the last couple of years you know it's like that excuse of me being too small sort of gone so <laughs> yeah. like why aren't you picking me kind of thing yeah yeah but, um yeah it's all in the past now so that's all good yeah so you go up to counties yeah start a new life you love it up there and get an opportunity to play mpc was it your first year up there no nah, no nah, second year so i played the second jock hobs on the 19s my first year Oh, had yeah. um, Beaver and Isaac Boss as the coaches. Oh, true. <laughs> yeah, so that was actually awesome for me. Um, funnily enough, because of Beaver, you ended up playing with a 10 as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, it was really good. Um, sort of. It was pretty tough when I first went up there. Just, like, um, moved in with a, a family that I had, didn't know. But they were awesome. Like, we're family friends now, really close um, mm. because of that experience. But, um, yeah, it was pretty daunting. Like, um, just, you know, been at home my whole life. And all of a sudden full-time job um building and yeah. um you know and then training and that sort of stuff but um like i said like so grateful that i had that experience um sort of built a bit of resilience and um you know i suppose made it worth it when i did sort of get those opportunities come along so mm. makes you grow up quick eh? having to move out of house like that at yeah for sure age. yeah yeah and just like um yeah like you say that resilience and all that sort of stuff was pretty big yeah. and what were you like on the building site Oh, I was all right. I was just like, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I don't think I was that that great, but I was just um, <laughs> just doing all those jobs that no one wants to do. You know, like standard, like drilling concrete and bloody putting in nails yeah. with a hammer. Like, well, you know, just standard stuff. But yeah, it was pretty. It was. It got tough, cause, and it got to the point where I was like, do I want to be a builder or do I want to be a rugby player? Yeah, like because I've come up here to commit to one, and this is taking up heaps of time. Which obviously, you know, got to pay bills and that sort of stuff. But um, so then I ended up scrapping that, and then I moved and uh, went to the steel mill in Waiuku, uh, Glenbrook. Sorry. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. So I was sucking up sand and um, all that sort of stuff. But the hours were a little bit better, um, and they they really enjoyed rugby and sort of helped um, with the you know training load, or like being able to train in the academy and all that sort of stuff as well. So um, oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. But. Yeah, some like I don't know if you know what that is, but it's basically where they make steel. Um, yeah. So you got the melters and stuff where you're sucking up the loose sand, where they literally melt the sand down to turn into steel. So it's like you know, hunt, like so hot in there, and you like they got me in there because I'm the small fit guy. But, <laughs> far out, it's just like yeah. But like you say, like I'm just glad like now that I don't have to do it because I'm like you know, it sort of helped with that right motivation because so. like I don't want to stay here, you know, like I'm, I want to crack on as soon as I can because yeah. You know, I don't want to be here till you know, 50. Yeah, I hear it a lot with the young academy guys who are building how hard that juggle is, like the massive shift yeah. and having to get up super early to get your gym in and then you start up till late to try and get yeah. your um, review or whatever done. So it's just a, it's so hard to juggle those two, eh? Yeah, and I'd seen that you know, through the county's academy. Like there's, you know, it's a pretty good academy, you know, like there's been lots of players come go through it and stuff like that. But I've seen a lot of people that do it and then, um, you know, their priority turns to the work stuff mm -hmm. and then they end up dropping the rugby or they just start playing club and then, you know, they sort of fizzle out in that space and I was pretty, you know, conscious of that. So I didn't want to do that. So I wanted to prioritise my rugby and that was sort of the big thing about dropping the building and sort of going to the steel mill to just mm -hmm. so I could prioritise the rugby and then um, go from there. So Back yourself and it paid off because it was the following year that you make counties and how are you yeah. feeling at this point? Yeah, good, like stoked. Um because that was sort of the goal from when I went up there to sort of get an NPC um, contract. Um, and, yeah, as it sort of worked out, um, it, from there it sort of moved pretty quick. Um, took a couple, you know, weeks and stuff to get my opportunity. Um, but it was pretty cool. Um, that was when Kieran Reid was with us for that season. So, oh, yeah. 
Yeah, so that was awesome. Like my debut was with him at eight, so I was like, felt oh, like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> small fish in a big pond. But um, yeah, no, that was an awesome year. Like just learned heaps um, about you know the way that professional rugby is, and um, you know being full time was pretty cool. Um, that was a dream to sort of you know get paid to play rugby. I was like, this is crazy, you know. Like, yeah. Um, so then yeah, it was yeah, it was a cool experience. Um, and then that was sort of where that opportunity to go down to the um, Canes sort of came about. Yeah. Yeah, and what was it like going down there? Injury injury replacement, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. No, it was awesome. Yeah, pretty daunting. Like, um, Wellington's a lot further away from Cambridge, so it's not yeah. just a short trip for home if I, like, you know, um, wanted to. But, no, it was um, it was cool. Didn't really know anyone again, so it was pretty similar um, as, you know, when I first went up to counties. So it was, um, I think, oh, JT, Jonathan Talmatina, he was the only, oh, yeah. he was the counties nine as well, so he was the only person that I knew, but. Um, you know, they're super welcoming. Um, you know, people like Artie, the senior players were awesome, like actually making the effort to sort of getting to know me, sort of made, mm-hmm. made me feel welcome. Because, um, yeah, you sort of don't really know where you sit when you're an injury replacement for the first time. You sort of think, yeah. oh, I might be on the out, like just sort of doing my own thing over here, waiting, you know, whatever. But, um, yeah, no, it was awesome. And then managed to get a couple of games um, throughout that year. Um, and then I sort of just found myself growing in confidence and uh, stuff from that. So, yeah. Who were you living with down there? Uh, I was living with Auburn Ledger. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, because he Kansas, came down with injury yeah, replacement sure. as well. Yeah, course, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, but we we're sort of floating around. We we're in Karori to start with, and then ended up in the um, Tory Street oh, apartment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. everyone's lived there. By, got kicked out by Scrap <laughs> um, and Simon Hickey, I think, because they're in the um, <laughs> good apartment. Um, but yeah, no, nah, it was all good. Um, yeah. Tourist shoe department. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> that is humble. <laughs> yeah. So then, what was the following year? You go back up to counties, and this was sort of your your breakthrough year. Where uh, or was it? One more? No, nah, it was one more. So that was the year that I um, dislocated my shoulder in the first oh, game. Yeah. Oh, it was COVID then, year. Yeah. yeah. So then we, but okay. yeah, like I said, it was so dislocated my shoulder. They had one more game, and then COVID blocked out Auckland yeah that's right um so like I literally was out for five and a half months and missed two games or something so like yeah yeah, yeah. but then um yeah then that 2022 county uh Kane season sort of struggled for game time after coming back from um the shoulder injury was third string behind TJ and Boothie um which was mm-hmm. all good and then yeah it was that county season then where I sort of um got some more minutes opportunity and sort of cracked on a little bit yeah yeah, what, what sort of changed in that period, obviously, coming back from the injury, probably a little bit more confident being around the Canes um, for a couple of years now, learning the game? Yeah, it was definitely um, probably just confidence, I reckon. Yeah. Like, um, I was just so keen for an opportunity at the Canes, which didn't really come. Like, obviously, you know, I played six games, I think, from memory, all off the bench. So I was like, geez, I just need more game time. Mm-hmm. Like, and I'll, you know, I feel like I'm going to get a lot better. Um, and then, yeah, so that counties, yeah, sort of targeted – pretty hard i'm just gonna play my game um keep growing and try you know put my best foot forward um and then yeah as it sort of worked out managed to sort of cement that nine um role and yeah managed to play some pretty good footy um you know which was yeah it was awesome for me um getting used to you know being the starting nine playing big minutes um yeah it was it was good fun were you always confident in yourself you sound like you're just sort of you always believed in yourself more than you're probably getting picked for things or you're just yeah. sort of waiting for an opportunity? Yeah, I was probably just waiting for an opportunity like, yeah. and just being aware that, like, if I work hard enough, those opportunities will come and just, like, sort of being ready to take them, I guess. Um, I I wouldn't say, like, I was confident or, like, like not in a cocky way. Like, yeah. um, like I understood, like, you know, there were better players than me and um, all that sort of stuff and I sort of earned my stripes a little bit. But um, when that time did come, you know, like, it didn't matter the scenario, who are the nines and all that sort of stuff. Like I just wanted to play as good as I can, and I knew that I could play well regardless of the level that I was at. So, um, yeah, that was probably the um, the mindset, I guess. Yeah. yeah, well, definitely looked like the mindset from afar. Like every time you had an opportunity, you would you would grab it. And we mentioned TJ's injury before around opening up your opportunity to have a full Super Rugby season and get that game time you were you were craving and uh, you definitely didn't look back after that. Yeah, well, I made that um, ABS 15, the first team, and oh, after that right. NPC season. Yeah. yeah, and then I was like, holy, like, this is pretty crazy. Because like, um, they've obviously picked based off NPC form, which was yeah. cool. 
And the thing that stuck in my mind was like, well, I'm pretty sure it was the um, the All Blacks like coaches that picked the team. Yeah, I was like, we're in the group here. Like, this is crazy. Like, you know, like I'm like you know, based on like you know the selection thing. Like, I'm top six nines in the country. You know, mm. based on like who's available and stuff. I was like, this is like next level. Like, I remember that tour. I was just so nervous. Like, like crazy. Like, I've never been so nervous. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, I played that game in um, Ireland. The Ireland B team came off the bench, played. 15, 20 minutes or something behind yeah. Tej. Yeah. Like, and that was like, that was awesome. But like, I just was like so nervous. Like I felt <laughs> so out of place, which like looking back, like I wasn't, but um, you know how it is like when you first like that, cause that's the first time I represented New Zealand. Like, cause I didn't play any, you know, secondary schools, twenties or anything like that. So right, yeah. um, that was a big, like glad that I did it. Cause it sort of put me in good stead for when I sort of got back in a, you know, um, all blacks type environment. Um, mm. But yeah, that was, um, between that and then that sort of gave me confidence um, going into that Canes year. Um, and then obviously as the opportunity came about, um, had a pretty big year with game time and all that sort of stuff, yeah. How'd you find um, Scotty Hansen over there? He was, he was yeah, coach at the yeah. um, New Zealand 15, eh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was probably different to sort of what I um, had, you know, like especially at the Canes, we don't really have like a like a nine specialist kind of um coach and like yeah. he was really good for like sort of challenging us in that space with drills and um all that sort of stuff and webby was there for a bit um as well i think they swapped with Tej. Mm. um so that was probably my first type um kind of like i suppose individual coaching um experience like with drills and all that sort of stuff but um yeah just the way you sort of like um ask some questions and um sort of picked your brain a little bit it was um yeah it was it was, it was unique but yeah it was pretty cool yeah, and obviously going forward, he's now the. I think he selects the nines for the All Blacks, doesn't he? So, yeah. um, good wee relationship for you guys to have built already. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and it's like yeah, like you say, it's good to have. I suppose um, already have met him. You know, it makes it a little bit less daunting um, going back in there. But um, yeah, no, he's awesome. Like he's there for the right reasons. He wants to make people better, um, and that's why he sort of challenges people in that space. So um, yeah, yeah, no, it's awesome. And then on the back of your um, massive Super Rugby season. Scoring nine tries. Were you, were you confident you were in the frame for All Blacks? How did you find out? What was that like? Yeah, um, I guess I probably try, I try not to think about it too much. Like obviously, yeah. um, you know, the first time you sort of get in that conversations, um, it's pretty cool. You know, your mates start talking about it. Yeah, like um, obviously, mum and dad are pretty close. We've got a pretty close relationship, so I'm always talking to dad, and he's like, "Well, you're pretty close. Like if you keep playing well, you know, like you just never know." Yeah. Um, and then. Yeah, it wasn't until after the season was done. Um, I remember I was, I was at Subway of all places and <laughs> the the season had wrapped up and Colsey was there. He was like, oh, what are you doing Like for the team naming? I was like, oh, because I just hadn't thought about it. I was like, oh, I'm just going to stay in Wellington. Like, you know, just whatever. He's like, oh, if you're going to get picked, like you'd want to be with your family. Um, so you should go home. Like that would be my advice for you. And I was like, oh, if all people that would know it'd be cozy you know like <laughs> might, like sharing his wisdom with me um so i was like oh that's actually a pretty good point like you just never know so yeah ended up going um up to cambridge or care pair um mum and dad's and it was pretty yeah pretty special had my um like partner family um all the people that had sort of been there from the start um that family that i lived with in counties um they came down yeah um yeah it was yeah, it was pretty awesome like uh relief i guess when i did hear my name was just like i was, I was oh. gonna say put a lot of pressure oh, on yeah oh honestly i don't know they were gonna be there as well i was like are you guys serious like i might not get named here like and they're all chit-chatting like you know like you do i'm just like i can't even sit down like, i'm just like this is crazy and um my name's obviously a wee way down roy gard and i remember yeah. hearing like um finlay like christie coming early and i was like oh no like, i'm done like yeah. toast and then so as I get down, like my hands are literally just shaking. Like I'm just so nervous, I feel the heart in my chest. And then, um, yeah, the relief once I sort of um, hear my name get called was just, yeah, it was pretty special. Um, probably the first time I seen my old man cry. Like it was, yeah. yeah, it was pretty crazy. How good is that? That is so cool. And then you go into camp. How are you feeling going into camp? You feeling like you're up to it now? Yeah, yeah. I think um, probably just a reflection, I guess, how I was sort of playing. I felt like I... Um, earned it rather than um yeah. you know it's probably been a little bit different like with the canes i was an injury replacement so like i got in there because someone was injured but in this case i got uh, picked because i was playing well so um yeah. felt you know pretty comfortable um once i was in there you know and, I, and obviously i knew a lot of the boys already um and you know they were awesome again just 
making me feel welcome right from the start. Um, the coaches were cool, um, you know, able to have some, you know, pretty, you know, but like both sides, you know, like some good conversations in terms of the rugby stuff, but then also some stuff that's not about rugby, just sort of getting to know me and all that sort of stuff and getting to know yeah. them and just, yeah, sort of made made me sort of fit in or feel like I fit in pretty quickly, yeah. Yeah, and your debut, who was that against? Uh, the Wallabies. Oh, Wallabies. Yeah, MCG, yeah. Off the bench? Yeah, it was, yeah, yeah behind yeah. Nuggie, so, yeah, that was pretty that's cool. That's right. Yeah. What do you like sitting on the bench? Oh, I'm not too nervous? bad. Like, yeah, oh, I guess a little bit nervous, like especially um, when you come into those close – when you know it's tight or whatever, um, yeah, you just yeah. sort of don't know how it's going to unfold. Like um, it's probably a little bit different, and especially that year, I, I think I only came off the bench once for the game. Oh, true. So I was like, well, this is a little bit different, you know. Like, yeah. um, but I feel like um, I learned a lot from my Super Rugby experience uh, debut. Sorry, um, that was against the Crusaders when we lost an extra time. Set the drop kick. Yeah, Dave Havili. Oh, yeah, man. so that one actually, well, for me, it was pretty um, tough experience. So came on did all right i feel like my um probably didn't handle my emotions pretty very well looking back um felt like this is all good like this is easy you know no dramas and then um got a little bit probably overconfident and we went to extra time i got charged down which gave the crusaders the ball um and then obviously dihar hit the drop goal so that was um yeah. like geez that was probably like in my head you know when you um, think about it before the game you're like this is like the one thing I didn't want to happen, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, geez, that, yeah, definitely learned a lot from that day. But I was, you know, pretty adamant going into the um, AB's debut um, that I was going to sort of keep a, keep hold of my emotions, just do my role really well, and then whatever happens sort of happens, you know. Um, and, yeah. like, yeah, it was, like, awesome. But, um, to be able to, I guess, lock up the rugby championship and get the blitters up at the same time was, like, a dream come true. And yeah. to have my, my family again was over there as well. Um, they had, like, it's probably a little bit different with, you know, ABs and stuff. They just went there on a limb, you know, just because you don't know what selection and stuff, and it just worked out perfectly. So, it was, yeah, it was awesome. Mate, your parents have nailed everything. They've oh, nailed far you. Out. got naming your, your They honestly name. have, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, well, yeah, funny you say that, because they went over to, um, after I got picked for the World Cup, this was even further out. They were like, oh, we're going to go to these games, these two pool games. It was um, yeah. Italy and Uruguay. And then as it worked out, they ended up playing those as well. So, like, yeah, they kind of find it better. Yeah. They've got an insight, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Far out. And you mentioned the World Cup. What was it like being named for that? Were you confident you'd done enough to get selected in there? Yeah. Um, I thought I had – well, I hadn't done anything, like I guess, wrong to sort of push yeah. me out. But it was a bit – interesting because i only played one game so i played the mcg against the wallabies and then the week after in dunedin they didn't pick me um oh, yeah. but the feedback was you know it's pretty positive like you know you did yeah. well you know did your role all that sort of stuff so i was like oh if they wanted to see more they would have played me that's sort of my sort of how i was sort of thinking so i was like well maybe like i have done enough or they've just like no this guy sucks he's done like, <laughs> all good. and then like so be it but um yeah so i wasn't like it probably wasn't as stressful as the first team naming. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, it was an awesome experience over there. It was, um, yeah, just to know that it was the pinnacle, like there's no higher, um, I guess, yeah, like looking back, like, I was, had some pretty awesome experiences over there, like just little things like stuff that you just wouldn't even think about. Like we go have like a, um open captain's run and it's a full stadium like yeah. just things like that that you just like you wouldn't even think about until you're sort of there and experience it like it's, yeah it's unreal does that bring extra pressure to your game or like how did you feel or handle um, handle that nah i wasn't too bad like i did a lot of work with um gilbert anoka yeah um and he was pretty uh well he was awesome in terms of just sort of framing my mindset around just trying to keep it simple like um sort of not changing too much um and how i pre- prepare and um i suppose look at games because like that, what I'd been doing for the Canes and stuff was working. So just sort of keeping in that sort of um, same frame of mind. But yeah. um, no, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't really until um, – so I was about to play first game against Namibia. Um, that was my first, obviously, start as well. And then it wasn't until like, we were, like, you know, doing little handshakes and stuff and then Nuggy was like, go share the world, kid. And I was like, far out, I am too. I'm about to. Like, yeah. this is like – this is the world stage. Like, And it's like, oh, far out. Like, this is – all go now well like, it's yeah. real yeah but now nah, it's once you sort of get out there and um it's quite i guess quite good you have a little moment uh, when they're singing the national anthem and stuff to sort of get yourself um in the right frame of mind and 
um, then the hacker, obviously, and then once you're into it, it's all good. Yeah, yeah you certainly look like you handled it. Yeah, you're on fire in both those um, both those games. You got to crack, and I know anyone who was playing fantasy rugby around that period was. Um, <laughs> You're one of the first picked every every week you were named because you're on absolute <laughs> fire, scoring tries for fun and setting up plenty too. Yeah, no, I was just like it was really cool because the players around me sort of gave me lots of confidence. You know, like um, like DMAC obviously, um, Bowden, yeah. Richie as well. Like just the way they sort of um, give you confidence and encourage you to sort of play the the way that I've sort of been playing, um, not sort of go into my shell and just you know pass or just you know do my role so um yeah it was really cool um which i thought was probably going to be a little bit different when i was first in there like what did they sort of want from me um, in that space so you know it's cool and what was it like missing out on the selection for i guess the the bigger games the the crunch games like yeah everyone sort of had an opinion that you should have been in there somewhere but how how did you read much into that how did you handle it yeah it surprised me a little bit obviously just um because they sort of played me three games in a row um, building up, you know, two starts and one off the bench. Um, and I thought that I was playing well enough to sort of earn a selection um, for the quarterfinals. But, um, yeah, when I didn't, um, obviously pretty gutted, but um, the circumstances were a lot bigger than how I felt. Um, you know, like being a quarterfinal against Ireland, who were the best in the world at the time, um, and sort of everyone is, was starting to, you know, write the All Blacks off. So it was pretty unique week. Um, where I didn't have time to sort of think about myself. Um, just knowing that, you know, the people that have given so much to the jersey, if we lose, they're done. You know, they're not, there's no more All Black games for them, you know. Yeah. And um, so it was pretty, I guess it was hard for myself initially, but it was like, well, too bad. Like, I just got to do what's right for the team, sort of train as well as I can and um, help prepare them. So, And the media and everyone was so shocked that they even started the speculation that you had, Broken team protocol is the only way that yeah. you know, we hadn't been selected. But uh, what was the what was the rumours there? Yeah, so obviously um, Mumba got dropped that week. So then people sort of um, assumed that I was with him and just sort of put me in the same bracket, which I was like, oh, that's fine, whatever. Think what you think. Um, and then, well, even like Fozzie addressed it. He's like, well, we've just we think Finlay um, is best for this week, but. That's just that's the reality. I was like, yeah, that's sweet, all good, but the media didn't want to believe that for some reason. Um, and then I didn't get picked again for the semi, and then the media were like, no, nah, he must have done something really wrong. Like he's done something way worse. And then um, yeah, there were some rumours going around that um, I was getting involved with the um, the French liaison officer, oh, yeah. which um, yeah, it was pretty bizarre. Um, when I heard it, the media manager sort of um, like called me up, like to have a chat with him and sort of saying like, "Have you heard the rumours going around about you?" I was like, "Oh, like I was assuming like the you know being with Mama and stuff." And like, oh no, you um, you know been doing what you're doing. And then I was like, "Well, it's like I, I found it like it was, it was funny at the time because yeah. my partner was there. So <laughs> unless she said French liaison officer, like I don't know what the go was. But, um, She's a part time so liaison. First person I, showed. I was like, this is this is hilarious. Like get a load of this. Like people think I'm bloody getting around. Like when you're right there. Like and it was just yeah. But then obviously, um, again, it wasn't the right time to address it. But I was getting pretty like annoyed because it was you know. Yeah. Um, and then I started like obviously you sort of you see it people message me and then I see comments and then you know it's sort of like well, this is pretty like putting me in a bad light here yeah. like when I've literally done nothing you know like all I'm doing is trying to like prepare the team do what I can like I'm not you know it's not my fault I'm not getting picked and people are just you know saying it's because I've done something done like misconduct and stuff but I've done nothing um, so it was pretty frustrating and like my family as well like that was pretty yeah. niggly um, like people were hitting up like mum and dad saying like what's your boy done like, I was like really like are you serious yeah. like um, and it dragged on for so long. Like I remember getting a. Um, this was like the start of the year this year. Even getting a call from the hurricane CEO saying like, "What happened in France?" I was like, well, "What are you talking about? Like, there's nothing." Like, and he's like, "Well, we've, we've got a journalist here that wants to write a story." Like, is it, are you serious? Like, how has it travelled all this way? Like, yeah, yeah, it was just super bizarre. Like, um, yeah, I guess interesting how people sort of want to latch onto a story without any source, but yeah. Yeah, I don't know what media, whether it was you know New Zealand or international or what the go was, but yeah, it was pretty um pretty niggly and frustrating. It's probably lucky my partner was there, yeah, because you know it's pretty tough for her, like you know, and we're sort of going around in public and stuff, and you see, like you know, people um, be like, oh, I'm surprised he's still with her, or like you know, yeah, just yeah. little stuff like that. Sure. Like it's pretty um yeah. 
pretty niggly. Um, but yeah, but we obviously both know that it's just a lot of rubbish. But, yeah, yeah. Man, that must have been hard for you. At I mean, how old are you? You're still twenty three at this stage, and dealing with um, that much sort of media scrutiny on on the biggest stage after playing so well yeah. and in the games that you've played. Um, it always seems unfair when the media pick on someone like that. Yeah. Oh, it was just hard to like because I had to just bite my tongue a little bit. Yeah, you, know, you like, can't say anything. Um, you just want to jump like, on Instagram live oh, or something. Oh, and honestly. <laughs> share like, the... uh, how many times I'd written a comment and then just had to delete it. I, was like, I just can't like pipe up because it just makes me look worse. But, like, And it wasn't the right time to address it yeah. because it, like, you know, we've got like a World Cup final. Like, you know, yeah. Bozzy's not going to be like, oh, and also we're going to talk about this. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Like, like, that's just not the reality. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it was like it was just niggly that I couldn't actually do anything about it. Yeah, um, yeah, but yeah, it's all behind us now. I still get messages now, like you know, I post an Instagram post and someone comments like, "Why did you do that?" And it's like, well, I haven't. <laughs> like, Far out. Oh man, brutal. Mm. Well, they'll they'll yeah. soon forget. And um, well, what are you like watching um, those big games from the stands? How were the, how was the nerves throughout the, especially the Ireland game and I guess the South African one as well. Yeah, uh, that island one was yeah next level. Like genuinely felt sick. Like yeah. my hands like was just shaking. Like because um, it's just yeah it's a little bit different because it's out of your control. You know, like if you're on the bench or you're playing, you're like I can have an impact on this. Yeah. You know? um, but it was like well now my job's done. Like once that warm up was done, it was like all right well, let's see what the boys can do kind of thing. Like yeah. um, but geez yeah such a nerve wracking um, game, especially that island one. But like so awesome like probably you know watching one of the best games i've ever seen in person especially yeah. um yeah just like two two of the best teams in the world going at it um so much on the line so much pressure um seeing the boys like you know i guess um get away with one there at the end you know uh, i think it went to like 84 minutes or something like that yeah. that's a proper test match you know so um that was yeah and like the celebrations after like just seeing how proud people were of you know um us like the whole group and you know the players proud of each other it was just yeah it was something I like one of the best memories um, yeah. from being at the World Cup yeah that and then special. yeah obviously the final yeah what about the final obviously the red card um, changed the game a wee bit there mm. how, how'd you feel after that yeah um, oh, obviously gutted for the boys like especially Sammy and stuff but mm. so you could sort of um, feel it slipping away at times like and that was probably a pretty uncomfortable feeling like. Mm. Um, Sitting next to Coles actually because he wasn't playing. Obviously, um, he was getting a bit fired up, and then you know, you know how he is. But like, um, yeah, it was just almost the perfect, perfect finish. You know, like yeah. especially people like Fozzie, You know, like he got so much scrutiny and Sam Kane and all that sort of stuff. And it was like we almost, you know, um, I just pulled it off, and yeah. just yeah, the way it sort of unfolded didn't quite, not quite to be, but um, yeah, it's just, yeah, gutting for the for the boys that were done. You know, yeah. that was yeah, felt pretty stink. But yeah. it was it was some World Cup though. It was uh, some awesome um, knockout footy towards the back end of that tournament. Yeah. It was incredible to watch. And then you come back to New Zealand. You you back with the Hurricanes and mate, the season this year from the boys. I mean, you started off with a hiss and a roar before the injury, but um, what's changed in the Hurricanes? It looks like obviously you finished top of the table in the round robin. What's changed out there? What's Clarkey brought to the group that? Hasn't been there before. Yeah. Um, well, I guess with the like the structure or the team, the players, um, we've lost a little bit of experience from you know last year and stuff. So I feel like the leadership um, or players have stepped up in that space. You know, so it's sort of like not just on a few players to sort of lead, but everyone sort of steps up. Yeah. Um, like including myself, obviously, got a bit more experience now, so I can sort of talk a bit more and have a bit more influence and. Um, you know, um, communicating um, stuff like that, but um, yeah, Clark's been awesome. Um, sort of fits the mould really well with what we've sort of been working towards, um, and then brought, I suppose, a bit of his um, experience from you know sevens and stuff to sort of help with that balance of how we play, um, not overplaying or sticking too much to structure, and then we sort of just play what's in front and stuff like that. And it sort of just seems like it's starting to click. Um, but yeah, and like the I guess the connections and camaraderie has been pretty awesome this year, um, which. I guess hasn't been brewing for a while because um, we've had a similar group, but um, yeah, I guess this year it's probably been um, probably at its best, and it, I suppose reflects on the field. And then once you start winning, I guess it's pretty hard to stop. So um, yeah, yeah. now it's been good, and like the I guess the um, positive 
thing for me has been, we you know, when there has been a few injuries or we roll out new teams, um, it doesn't affect, you know, how we play. So, you know, we've got a whole squad that um, understands how we play or what we want to achieve. And we're sort of heading in the same direction. So, yeah, it's been pretty cool to watch. Yeah, mate, so much depth, especially at, like, loose forwards. And, like, you guys can rotate your loose forwards and you've got world-class looseies. Or it's basically that across your whole your whole side at the moment. These younger guys that have all sort of stepped up yeah. and they're all sort of that same age, like you say, around that leadership. And, man, it's been impressive to watch. Yeah, yeah. And, like, I feel like, as you're sort of saying, we could put anyone in the starting role regardless of you know the team structure or you know or anything like that and they can sort of just yeah. fit in perfectly you know like um you know we've got obviously bc there and then you can just chuck an aiden or harry godfrey um and it's just sort of mm-hmm. seamless um in terms of um the change and stuff so yeah that's no, been good yeah how good and, and what are your plans going forward obviously um you'll be back for end of year tour is the goal is it yeah yeah so my target's that um japan test um sort oh, of yeah. on the way yeah so see how we get on but um i guess yeah there's a lot of variables um like once i get this wire up um i guess in terms of getting the strength up and getting how quick i get to running and all that sort of stuff but um yeah that would be the, the goal to be available for that and if they pick me they pick me if they don't then i'm just getting to a long pre-season but um yeah now nah, it's been yeah good so far so we'll just keep rolling with it and you've committed with New Zealand Rugby and the Hurricanes through till 2027, is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Nice. So the World yeah. Cup's your, your main target, get to a second World Cup at the age of, what's that, quick mass, 26? 26, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. No, it's cool to sort of lock in, not worry about that sort of stuff and just um, you know enjoy my time with the Canes. And um, if I get back in the All Blacks, then that'd be awesome as well. So, um, yeah, just keep trucking on, yeah. Exciting times! It's good for All Black fans to and Hurricane fans to hear that you're not too far away from returning to the field. But we have gone to our Instagram for some questions, and mate, you are a big deal. Like so many have come through. I wanted to send you them all because I was like, Jesus, how many, how many people want to have a question for you? But um, obviously, heaps were around. Um, what happened at the Rugby World Cup, which you've gone through. Heaps were around your Bronco. Um, so we'll go through a couple of the Bronco ones because yes, but... four eleven is that is that your quickest is that your PB? Yeah, yeah. So I think that's what tied with what Bear's got a. Eh? Yeah, I was going to say that. Yeah. Must, this must have been the quickest time that I know. I've never heard yeah. of quicker than that. Yeah. yeah. So did that after the off season after the World Cup in January. Yeah. Um, yeah, had them, actually, it was quite, I guess, interesting. I had some little calf niggles beforehand, oh, probably from too much running. So then I didn't <laughs> didn't do any running that week in the build-up. Um, but, yeah, it was just, I don't know, just the competitive edge that comes out of me. Like, I had DMAC chasing me the whole time. So I was like, yeah. I'm not, like, as soon as I started, like, something just flicks. I'm like, I'm not letting you beat me. Like, <laughs> I don't care. Like, <laughs> so then, yeah, he was pushing me, like, almost like a spotter, I guess, and then sort of just turned on the afternoons at the end and, with 20 to go, I heard like 4.09 or something. It was like, holy hecka, like hammer yeah. down. Like we're just yeah. about there. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. So that was definitely my best by, oh, my best before that was like 4.14 or something. But, oh, true. Sure. Yeah. What's what's the tips to it? Obviously, that's coming a lot. Lots of people want a little secret to maybe shave one or two seconds yeah. off there. Five minutes 50. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I, if I was to try like do a run a good one, like you just sort of, Obviously, you're fresh at the start. Just roll, roll with it. Like I don't try like hold myself back or anything like that. Like it's usually pretty quick. Um, but then just trying to, it's, I reckon it's all mental. Life, just trying to mm-hmm. run actively, think like run fast, like and just keep going. And then sort of you get to that fourth one, and you sort of flick it up another gear. And then that last one's almost like just about a sprint. Like Fire that's right. sort of that's the way I sort of um, go about it. So yeah. Got plenty of time to recover after. Fast I run, the quicker I can get a rest. So. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I love it. I love the mice. Do you, someone asked if you ever think you could break the four minute mark, which I don't know if that's even possible. Yeah, I don't know. What would that, I don't know what the splits would be for that. That'd be like 45 or something ridiculous. Yeah, Every rep. Well, yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm sure someone could. I don't know if it'll be a rugby player. <laughs> like, get a runner in there or something and they'll be able to carve it up. But yeah, I don't know. Try to get 14 first, I reckon. We'll start yeah, there and then break the see how we get on. Yeah. Yeah. We'll separate myself from Bodie and then we'll go from there. Yeah, to take the outright record. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Surely. Okay, how do you train your conditioning? Obviously, it's all part of it, but what's the case yeah. you're training? Um, yeah, well, it's usually just like the rugby-specific stuff. Um, 
mix of aerobic and anaerobic um, MAS stuff is good. Um, just sort of keep the heart rate up and let practicing running fast, I guess. Yeah, yeah. that's probably the uh, main thing for me. Like, I don't want to be an athlete that's fit but slow. That, mm-hmm. if that makes sense in terms of yeah. speed. So um, trying to accelerate quick, um, be able to change direction quick, all that sort of stuff, sort of um, always a focus when I'm trying to do speed stuff and, you know, turning and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, that's probably being a nine. That's probably some important things for me, yeah. TJ hasn't convinced you to jump on the 10K round post-game. <laughs> nah, not yet, nah. Yeah, I don't know. There's not many people that would probably be keen to join him either. <laughs> well, that's probably the last thing people want to do after a game of rugby, but uh, fair play to him. Probably, it probably is a good way to um, recover and sort of refresh yourself after a game and reflect and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, yeah that's quite good. Okay, next one. How do you train your sidesteps almost NFL juke-like? Um big nfl man yeah no i don't know um probably just from training and stuff like we don't re- i don't really do like any um like in, like one-on-one stuff because i always get yeah. shown up like <laughs> ruben always tries to get me over i'm like, no, like you're just doing it for a clip like there'll be someone filming me and then i'll get exposed like um <laughs> no nah, but i reckon it probably just comes naturally in the games and stuff um yeah yeah a little, little bit of, I guess, show and goes, which um, I guess helps with that lateral go. step, like from the base. So that's probably sort of how I step. But um, yeah, I'm not too good at high speed stepping. I sort of tend to just run into them. But yeah, um, it's probably something that probably just comes naturally and just from playing um, young when I was younger. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Okay. This, speaking of Ruben Love, um, why does he leave the microwave on 0.01 seconds when he's finished? <laughs> It's just efficiency. <laughs> Don't need to hear the beeping. <laughs> Far out. That's right. He needs to turn the lights off in his room. <laughs> Wasting power. So are you living with him? Yeah, yeah, we live together, yeah. Oh, true. Yeah. <laughs> and he goes to turn the microwave on and he's... Yeah, gets it for one second. <laughs> now I just do it to piss him off because I know he hates it. <laughs> oh, it's good stuff. Okay, when will he get the nose job? Who is that from? That's <laughs> far out. Uh, I've actually had one when I was like 16 because my nose is always blocked. Oh, true. It's just, yeah. Like, I don't know if it's a sinus thing or like, um, like I get hay fever pretty bad as well. But yeah, yeah, it's obviously not, it's not really straight. I don't really want people to look at it. But um, <laughs> yeah, we actually tried to align it, but it just, yeah, it didn't really work. So we'll just hopefully if someone's going to, you know, punch me in the suite or something, they go across this way <laughs> to straighten it out for me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, what attributes make a good modern halfback? Um, energy. Mm. Uh, that's probably why um, Nagy's been so good for so long. Um, you know, regardless of how he's sort of um, how he's developed throughout the years, he's always got lots of energy, um, which is pretty crucial. Being able to g up the forwards and stuff like that. Um, obviously, passing core roles pretty crucial, um, but they have a bit of X factor as well whether that's your physicality like Tej or running game or uh, being able to kick off both both feet and run from anywhere or whatever it might be. So, yeah, probably finding a bit of X factor would be probably something to set you yeah. apart from the rest, I guess, yeah. A point of difference, I like mm. it. Yeah, that is a very good piece of advice. Okay, another piece of advice, tips on game management, communication and how to direct a team around. Um, I think that probably just comes with like your, how you prepare, um, having a good connection with your team. Uh, it's pretty yeah. crucial because if you're not on the same page then you're going to do things that sort of are a bit clunky or um, not getting the most out of the team. But um, yeah, and it's having a really good strategy, um, like what type of kicks you're going to do in that week or, you know, prepared for um, certain variables around wind, rain, all that sort of stuff. And yeah. um, probably having a good awareness around the other boys, sort of how the, I mean, just how the game's sort of unfolding and having solutions around that. So probably a lot of it's just around pre- preparation and um, learning from experiences because, you know, yeah. as you know, with, um, when you're being a young fella, you learn some hard lessons um, in terms of game management and stuff. So, um, yeah, that's probably the, the way I'd sort of put yeah. it. Yeah. What sped up your learnings there, like you think? Because obviously still really young and um, you're game driving. You look really confident and comfortable driving a, a team or a game game now and um, you mentioned you charged down an extra time which is uh, obvious learning but potentially how much footy you watch or like what's what do you feel like has been the key to you understanding the game so well and quickly yeah probably um well a lot of it's around preparation like having really good conversations yeah. with you know people that are sort of been in that um 
position, you know, before me with lots of experience. You know, like TJ is awesome. Um, Nagy was awesome when he was at the World Cup. Like, it's a bit of an open book. I could just ask him anything um, in terms of, what well, anything, passing, game strat, whatever it might be. So um, that and then just, yeah, I would rather, I'm at the point now, I'd rather learn before I sort of make the mistakes. Um, yeah. So, yeah, like, like you say, watching footy, um, what I do differently, if, you know, someone, you know, makes a mistake or doesn't do something right um, and then just, yeah, trying to have a clear head when I'm playing just so I can think efficiently, not getting too emotional. Um, yeah, that's probably, I guess, how I try seem like I <laughs> know what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you're nailing it. <laughs> so that is good advice for any young nine. And lots of um, questions came in from, obviously, young aspiring nines. Um you're an inspiration to many of them. Next question is, how do you deal with the fear and the emotions of rehab and injury? Um, probably just, well, the first step for me was just accepting it. Like, it's the reality, you know, it's not going to change. Don't need to worry yeah. about the why me, blah, 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 all that sort of stuff. But um, just having a really good plan around how you're sort of going to go about this rehab. So that's why the uh, medical team at the Canes has been so awesome. Um, like, they've done their homework. They sort of pretty open to trying some new things to sort of seeing how it works and um, like I got a really good uh, relationship with the um, physio that I'm sort of working with because he's the county's one as well so he's sort of he's doing both so um, mm. like it's really good that I'm going to be working with him sort of for the whole journey um, but yeah I guess just trying to not be too focused on the outcome and just sort of um, I guess setting goals but how are you going to achieve those so a um, little week by week things so for an example like be trying to chip away at my knee flexion so i'm like well, i'm gonna try to get 90 degrees you know by set date and then from there then what gonna go to 110 or get on the bike and then sort of just go from there so um then you sort of tick those and that sort of keeps me sort of positive because i am improving um been mm -hmm. filming a little bit as like of the exercise i've been doing um because they obviously can get a bit repetitive but seeing how much i've grown in terms of stability and all that sort of stuff has been good so um, yeah, just I guess little milestones um, when I tick them off sort of keeps me positive and then sort of that what next mentality, I guess, rather than looking in the distance, yeah. sort of worrying about what if and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, love it. And shout out to the to the vlog of the injury. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know how many we got paid. left of those, hey. but uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> hey, it was growing huge momentum. I was loving it. Okay, next one, ask him about the small backs with Sarah Walker. Jeez, when was that? So that was. When I made that Roller Mills team, it was me and the other um, Year 7 player, his name is Jake. We were doing a bit, obviously, BMX thing. Um, I can't remember a lot of it, but I just remember the clothes that they put me in were so oversized. Um, <laughs> <laughs> ridiculous. Um, and we were, yeah, doing some BMX thing and did some couple of practice runs and stuff, and then we are going to do a little race. And, yeah, I remember... Just I don't know. I guess I've always been competitive. As soon as the gate went down, like just because it's obviously like a down slope before the first jump, and I just went so hard to try beat him, and I just fucking oh sorry, I just um <laughs> I just launched in the air like handlebars went sideways, <laughs> like I don't know how I didn't fall, but like just and then just landed on the flat top of the um the jump, like yes, yeah, and then after that I was like all right, I need to slow down. Like, this is crazy. But, um, yeah, what, was that on TV? Was was that well, I think so. Yeah, it was filmed. Yeah, it was on this. Um, yeah, it must have been on the small, small backs. Yeah, I don't know if yeah. you have to find. So you it never right, saw the footage, or you haven't. I got can't the remember. Nah, I I, oh, I must have seen it. Yeah, I remember the little GoPro, and I see my handlebars going sideways and <laughs> everything as I hit the jump. But, yeah. <laughs> Oh, that'd be good footage to track down, actually, if someone's got that out there, send it through. Um, love to see <laughs> young Cam flying down the BMX track. Okay, next one, golf handicap. Uh, before I hurt my leg, it was like a 12. Oh, yeah. Which is, yeah What's about I that got into it a little middle, bit. middle of the range in that all-black uh, Yeah, not the best, not the worst. Yeah. Yeah, so that was all good. Yeah, we played a bit of golf over there, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, had a little rider cut format type thing couple of teams and stuff um yeah which was pretty fun good on days off sort of get yeah. away from the footy and stuff but um yeah now i'm probably playing it probably like a 15 ish oh, yeah. yeah i only just literally played my first round on wednesday it was, and you went all right, right but, yeah all right but yeah plenty <laughs> of work to do <laughs> oh, good stuff. okay next one if you could play with any 10 past or future who would it be 
uh, probably just be DC. Oh, yeah. So here's, yeah. Here's my sort of um, my idol growing up. Like, just sort of looked up to him. Um, I thought he was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, left footed. I heard he played a little bit of nine when he was a kid. So <laughs> I was sort of waiting for my transition back to 10, but it never happened. <laughs> um, yeah, but no, he's just like, looked like a pretty, you know, awesome player, obviously. Good fella. Met him. Um, Obviously, last year, which was pretty cool, sort of, you know, just a, a good bugger. Um, sort of fitted the mould of sort of what I thought he was like as a person, yeah. which was pretty cool. You know, like you just never know what people are like um, in person, you know, when you look up to them and stuff. So, um, yeah, but no, it's just yeah, definitely DC. Would you ever move out to 10? Or is that done, you think? Um, oh, maybe maybe the scenario where I start at 9 and then move out to 10 for oh, the back end. Yeah, yeah I don't know. That's um, the dream. But then I've seen, like, Dupont's been playing a bit of 10 as well. And yeah. He played when he was younger. So it's probably, like, I guess one of the – they work hand in hand those two roles, so mm. um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe in the future, but um, yeah, at the moment, just trying to lock in, try to be a good nine, just go from there. Yeah, love it. Okay, last question. One piece of advice you have for a Woodland listener? My favourite question. <laughs> yeah, um, just based off like my experiences and stuff, it would probably be like um, you know, set, have a dream, set goals, and then I guess when those um, opportunities come. Just be ready to take them. Um, a lot of my career has been around opportunity and just being ready for those. Um, and yeah, like that's not just sport or rugby, you know, like whether whatever you want to do, um, just, you know, work hard towards it. And then when those opportunities do come, be ready to take them. That's probably the one bit of advice. I love it. Be ready because, man, you have been ready every time you've had an opportunity. It's true, true words from. Um, one of the greats and um, been awesome to go through your journey with you mate like um, what a rise what an incredible rise to go from like you say someone who's not making any rep teams to missing out on all the schools and New Zealand age grades to a couple years later becoming an all black through um, a rapid rise of taking opportunities like you mentioned Um, it's been pretty special to uh, witness and um, yeah, unfortunate about the injury, but like I said at the start, I've got no doubts that you're going to be back in better form than ever and um, ready to light it up again in a black jersey and a Hurricanes jersey, of course. But appreciate you coming on the podcast, mate. You're a true lad. I really appreciate it. You're a lad.